is Jane Foster. What made you want to do another Thor film? Well, it's it's always so fun to get to reunite with people you've worked with before when you like them, when you all had a good time together. So mm -hmm. this was so nice to get to be with everyone again after two years and get to re-enter the, the fun world because it's really just a fun, fun movie. Mm. In the first film, Jane was kind of anchored on Earth. Mm -hmm. This time we get to see her coming off planet to the, the Nine Realms, Fish the Asgardian world. Yeah, um, talk about acting through that. Well, it was really, um, it was a little bit scary at first to, to have Jane be going to Asgard because I would just was like, oh God, I'm going to stand out. It's going to be so awkward to have all of these, you know, Amazonian, beautiful, like big actors around and talking in Shakespeare, you know, like faux Shakespearean mm -hmm. verse. And, and, and then there's like little me there, you know, with my valley girl accent, you know, <laughs> talking. But, um, but it was, it was really fun to get to, to be in it too, because for the first time I got to interact with Tom Hiddleston who plays Loki and Anthony Hopkins plays Odin, two actors I adore, and Rene Russo, who I love. And um, so I got to have scenes with them, which was really exciting, and also get to see all the sets, and which I had missed before, which was just astonishing. Before those adventures, uh, we, I think we meet you on a, on a date yes. at the beginning of this, your, uh, the film. Um, just talk about filming that scene. Different kind of scene to what you'd expect from a Thor movie. Absolutely. It was, it was really fun, and um, Chris O'Dowd, who who plays uh, Richard, the, the gentleman I'm on a date with um, at the start of the film is so funny and so good. And um, yeah, so she's, you know, trying to move on after Thor. And of course, it's impossible to explain, um, you know, how that ended because you can't say, oh yeah, he's from another universe and <laughs> mm. he's back on his planet or whatever. No one, no one will understand that story. Mm. Um, how important is it to have those kind of humorous beats in these big action films? Well, I think it's what sets the Marvel movies apart is that they have these really, um, you know, light comic book moments that really remind you of the, the genre and make it just fun that it's not supposed to be some, you know, crazy, dark, you know, there's there's the real action parts and and there are sort of he heavier moments, but um, in the end, it's real comic book entertainment. Mm. You've started to tour the film around the world. You've started to see the fans' reaction as well. Yeah. Um, when people start talking to you about it, you get an idea of how it's gone. Um, just talk about your reaction. Well, it's been so exciting because. You know, you have no idea when you're shooting these movies what they're going to turn out like because there's so many effects, there's so many people involved, the scope is so large, like it's kind of impossible to to feel the what the movie's going to be like. Um, and then so to see it come to fruition and have everyone, everyone's been so enthusiastic and telling me how, how much fun they had watching it and how funny it is and surprisingly funny and... Uh, yeah, that it's it's a really great feeling to, to be part of something like that. Yeah. And uh, of course you go from filming it, which is a different world with green screens and different sets, yeah. to seeing the final product, sorry, seeing the yes. final product. Um, it must have blown you away a little bit to see it, it all appear on the screen. Yeah, it's really so, it's so beautiful when you see the, the final product. And I mean, the ability, I, I have such, new respect for the director and for for all of the um all of the visual effects people i mean to be able to have that in your head when we saw what we saw is just really really such such a talent mm. that said uh, there are a lot of physical sets built for this, this yes. film you were down in shepton studios i believe yes. um did that help yeah yeah no it's really it's really helpful to have real sets and, and those sets are so beautiful and grand that they really have this kind of awe-inspiring effect and it ends up being sort of a lot of the details and you know the views of like through the window when you see these sort of deep views of the city and um, you know th those and like the funeral scene like those are things that were complete almost completely mm -hmm. CGI so um, so yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's sort of like seeing pictures of yourself on a vacation 
you've never been on, you know, yeah. like, you're like, oh, I was there, but I never was there until I just looked at it on mm. screen. Yeah. Finally, um, when you get to go to Asgard, I mean, we've seen you in space costume before, mm -hmm. um, but it's another, you know, alien uh, get up you've to put on and yeah. the character looks, like you said, a fish out of water. Yeah. Um, is that still fun for you? Do you enjoy that kind of thing? Yeah, it, it's really fun. I mean, it's just, I think it's rare in film these days to get that level of artisanship. I mean, the, the fabrics are made expressly for the movie. I mean, they design them and manufacture the fabrics, particularly for this, and they're like super beautiful, um, you know, silks, and, and then all of the jewelry and armor is, is handmade by people in the studio. There's like a whole workshop. It's really, it's like old Hollywood that, you know, we weren't lucky enough to, to live through. You can, you can experience a little bit of in these, these movies.